Hello there and a warm welcome to this edition of Eco at Africa, your favorite eco show. My name is Joy Doreen Bira and in Nairobi we are coming to you from the Mamba village uh, which is quite an eco place as you can see from my background. My colleague NT is on the other side of Africa. NT, how are you doing? Together we bring you exciting environmental stories from all over Africa and Europe. Solutions to save our climate, good ideas for our environment, and tips and tricks to keep our nature safe, like this animal rescue garden where I'm taking the, our leadings from. But here's what we have lined up on the show today. We visit one of Nigeria's e-mobility pioneers who tries to push along a cleaner and greener city of Lagos. With the help of German scientists, our reporter reveals the secret of new super plants that absorb useful metals from the soil. And we visit biologist Steve Boyce, who runs a project to save the Cape Parrot from extinction in South Africa. Now, driving in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital, is tasking. The effect of fumes of thousands of vehicles on the road has been described as a major cause of pollution. And that is not likely to change with about 20 million people in Lagos who need to move around. Femiye and Mike Ologonye are trying to change the status quo. They have invested in green electric two and three wheelers that are being assembled in Lagos. The road to a cleaner and greener Nigeria is very arduous. Every day, hundreds of thousands of cars try to make their way across Lagos, Africa's biggest city and the traffic congestion comes with a heavy cost. The CO2 emissions contribute to global warming and rising sea levels and the toxic fumes are a serious health hazard. A small company in Lagos decided to take the first step. The owners have invested in environmentally friendly three-wheelers which are currently being assembled in Lagos. The vehicles are suitable for taxi entrepreneurs, delivery services, and use for haulage. The beautiful thing is, is this clean energy. It is electric vehicle, so no pollution, no additional cost to even the entrepreneur because you lower the cost of delivering your services. It has very limited changing part that you need to replace. When a module is bad, then you can easily replace it. Once you replace it, it's back on the road. Femioye says the vehicles can drive up to 200 kilometers with the fully charged battery. Customers can rent the vehicles. One hour will cost the equivalent of two and a half euros. Their company, Carbon Network, is currently building a network of solar charging stations along all major highways in Nigeria. Even so, e-mobility faces a lot of challenges in Nigeria the power grid in the West African country is still unreliable. Many people here depend on generators, but using them to charge an electric car will be senseless. In addition, there is no public support for the technology in Nigeria. Despite those challenges, the team says it's undeterred. With the government that is still thinking 30 years backwards, when we need to begin to look at how we want to get position and take advantage. It's just the little push that is needed for Nigeria to begin to achieve and stay at the front burner of all of this innovation and the changes that we want to see. Carbon Credit Network plans to launch its services at the end of 2018. So far, about 50 of the e-vehicles have been built. The company wants to disrupt the expensive and dirty transport system in Africa by offering a cleaner and cheaper alternative. If the federal government builds a stable power supply and devices policies to encourage investment, chances of success are good. <laughs> 